work, energy and power. So these are the words work, energy and power. In everyday language, we use them normally like uh, farming or construction or student even studying for some competitive exam, an artist which is painting a beautiful landscape. They all are working. We are always working. Even if we are sleeping, we are working. But uh, in physics, the work, this, wor this word work has a very definite and precise meaning. We can say that somebody who has a capacity to, to uh, work for say 14 to 16 hours has good stamina. The person who can only work for 2-3 hours, he may not be having good stamina or energy. Okay, so energy is what? Energy is our capacity to do work. But in physics, the term energy is related in this sense only. Means the work, uh, the uh, capacity to do work. But the, the word which is called as work has some meaning. And along with this, we talk about power. So power has also different shades like uh, when we are playing say karate or boxing then we say give or uh, use powerful punches that is you deliver it with great speed so these are the different shades of uh, meaning of word power so we'll see that there is a correlation between all these words that is work energy and power how they are related what are the definitions what are the physical quantities that these they represent and how they are related before we go ahead let us know the scalar product of two vectors scalar product so physical quantities like the displacement that is d velocity and acceleration and force these are all vectors and uh, we have already seen how to add and subtract the vectors. Now we will see how we, we can multiply the vectors. So there are two ways. One is called the dot product. One is called the cross product. So first is the scalar product gives us scalar when two vectors and the other unknown as the uh, other known ways the vector product produces a new vector from two vectors. I am saying when two vectors are multiplied, you get a scalar, and when you multiply two vectors, say cross, you get a vector. So these are the two ways. So here uh, we take the scalar product of two vectors. The scalar product or dot product. The C. I have used a dot here. I have used a cross here. So this is called the dot product. So dot product of any two vectors, say a and b, this is denoted by a dot b. A dot b. And this simply means a dot b means a b cos theta. What is this a b cos theta? See, this is a and this is b. So, this is the angle between these two vectors. So, what is the component of b on a? If this is theta, it is b cos theta. So, a into b cos theta. Or you can say, if this is a, this is b, what is the component of a on b? That is a cos theta. So, b into a cos theta. Similar way, a dot b can be represented as a b cos theta. That is the component of b on a and b into a cos theta. That means component of a on b. As you see here, this is b, this is b cos theta. So, a into b cos theta. In this case, we have a and the cos component is a cos theta. This a cos theta is multiplied by b. This is your scalar product you can say the, the project, projection okay the scalar product are commutative that is a dot b is equal to b dot a also scalar product obeys the distributive law a dot b plus c is a dot b plus a dot c a dot lambda b is equal to you can take lambda out this is a dot b lambda can be any real number and uh, i j k if these are unit vectors then if you take dot product of i and i that is going to give you 1 likewise j dot j and k dot k will give you 1 the simple reason is i dot i is i into i 
into cos what is the angle between the same vectors it is 0. So, you get this is magnitude because this is a unit vector you get 1 here, here 1 and cos 0 is also 1. So, you get 1 that is how and when you talk about the i j k that is this is i unit vector along x axis this is j and this is k. Now, if you take this j and k the angle between them is 90 degree. So, when when you take the dot product this gives you j k and cos 90 degree. So, the magnitude is 1 here 1 cos 90 is 0. So, every time if you if you take i j j k or k j you will get 0 because of cos 90 degree. The component of a in terms of uh, say in the x y z axis can be represented as a x i a y j and a z k. Similarly, b can be written as b x i b y j and b b z k. When you take the scalar product of these two, what we have to do is we have to multiply each term by each term means a x i into a a x i into into a b x i a x i into b y j a x i into b z j b z k. But you see here i i will give you one. Otherwise, i j and i k will give you zero. So when you take a dot product, only this term, this term, and this term will remain because this is going to give you one value. I into I is one. But if you multiply I with J, you are getting going to get zero. So only A X B X, A Y B Y, and A Z B Z will remain. And if we have A dot A, that is, you multiply this with this again, it is going to give, going to give you A square, which is simply A X A X, that is A X square. A y a y a y square a z a z a z square others are going to be 0. So, when you take uh, this a dot a this is simply a magnitude of a magnitude of a and cos 0 because same vector we are talking about a vector and again a vector. So, what are the angles between them this is 0 degree angle with the same vector is 0 degree. So, you get a square, but if you take a dot b and a b are perpendicular if a and b are perpendicular we say it is 0 or we can also say that if a dot b is 0 then they are supposed to be perpendicular to each other. One question is there find the angle between force that is f this is given by uh, in a vector form unit and displacement is given like this also find the projection of f on d projection of f on d is f cos theta into d. And it means f into d cos theta. So, f dot d because uh, we have to find the because f and d is given. So, let us find out first f dot d. f dot d give you f x dx, f y dy, f z dz. Take this value 3 into 5, 4 into 4, 5 into 3. So, what do you get? You get some 16 units. Okay. This is uh, these are the value 3, uh, 3, 4, 5 we have use, used and 5 4 3. So, this is just consider this to be say minus 3 if some mistake is there in your book. So, just uh, ignore the number just multiply these uh, coefficients. So, you get some 16 unit. Now, f dot d is what? See, f dot d if you take the dot product you get f d cos theta. So, 16 unit can be equated with f d cos theta. So, f d cos theta is 16. But what this uh, f dot f means f square, fx square, fy square, fz square, this gives you this one 9 square, fy square that is 60, 14 square. And if you consider this to be 5, you get 25. In this similar manner, d 5 square plus 4 square plus 3 square. So, d dot d gives you this one 15 minutes. So, what is the cos theta? Cos theta, if you find want to find out cos theta, it will be f dot d by magnitude of f and magnitude of t. Okay. So, this magnitude of f and d, if you see f square, this f square gives you 50. So, what is f? It is under root 50. Similarly, this is d dot d, that, that is from here, it is d square. d square, d square, so d comes to be under root 50. So, this is f, this is d, means this is f, this is d magnitude. And f dot d we have just found out as 16. So, 16 by under root 50. Under root 50, you get some 0 0.32, and just take cos inverse here, you get theta. Notions of work and energy the work energy theorem. 
we know that in a rectilinear, mo rectilinear motion we have acceleration as a so we can always write v square is equal to u square plus 2s or v square minus u square equal to 2s this v is the final velocity u is the initial velocity a is the acceleration s is the distance being traveled now multiply both sides by m by 2 what do you get half mv square minus half mu square is equal to ma into s ma is what this is force force equal to ma so let us write it write it as f into s so we have used the second law of motion f equal to ma here and uh, v square minus u square is 2 when we want to generalize it to say uh, other dimensions also so in three dimensions we can employ the vectors we have to employ vectors so this will become a dot d because we are employing vector not simply a s it has to be in vector form that is why it is bold and there is a dot product between them now again multiply both side by m by 2 so you get half mv square minus half mu square equal to m into a d but m a is f so it, you get f dot d now this is this is these are the equations where we can uh, arrive at the definition of work and energy so this is the difference of what this is the, the, the left side are simply the difference of half the mass into velocity okay the initial half the mass velocity minus final half uh, mass half uh, mass of the velocity and this is called the kinetic energy we we'll learn about this more but for the time sake these are the kinetic energy so what is the right hand side this is the product of displacement and the component of force along the displacement the component of force along the displacement because f dot d will be eventually f d cos theta okay so th this quantity is nothing but work f dot d is work this is work and this is simply the difference of the kinetic velocity means final kinetic velocity minus initial kinetic velocity it gives you work which is eventually equal to f dot d in uh, one dimension it is f dot s but in more than one dimension it is going to be f dot d okay so work refers to the force and the displacement over which the body or over which the force is acting we can say work is done by a force on a body over certain displacement so force is acting some displacement is there then we say some work is being done and uh, this equation simply if you say these two are the special case of work energy theorem the change in the kinetic energy of a particle is equal to the work done on it by net force so this is simply change in kinetic energy this is simply change in kinetic energy and what is the energy being changed is the work done let us take an example it is well known that a raindrop falls under the influence of a downward gravitational force and the opposing resistive force so a drop is falling there is a resistive resistive force which resists it now latter is proportional means resistive force is proportional to the speed of the drop but is otherwise underdetermined consider drop of mass 1 gram falling from the height 1 kilometer it hits the ground with a speed of 50 meter per second now we have to find out what is the work done by the gravitational force and what is the work done by unknown resistive force so how to find this see we have just seen that the change in the kinetic energy is what is the work done okay or simply you can say work done is change in kinetic energy which is equal to f into d so delta k is what half mv square minus half mu square but it is coming from rest so u is 0 that is why we have written 0 here so delta k is simply half into mass is 10, 10 to the power minus 3 because it is 1 gram so we have just changed it in, into the proper unit 10 to the power minus 3 and velocity is 50 so 50 into 50 you get delta k equal to 1.25 joule and uh, we have just assumed that the initially the drop is at rest now we assume that g is the uh, acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square now what is the work done by gravitational force see mg is the this one and from this height so m this is the height so mg into h mg into h force into displacement right so a force is mg downwards and displacement that is h 
So MGH is the work done by gravity. Again, we use mass, gravity, and height. Height is also given one kilometer, so we change into meter. This gives you 10 joule. Now, from the work theorem energy, the change in the velocity, the change in the kinetic energy is the work done. And what is the total work done? Total work done is work done by the gravity and work done by the resistive force. So Wg plus Wr. This Wr is the work done by the resistive force. So, how to find this Wr? We can take this here. Okay. So, delta k minus Wg. Delta k we have found out to 1.25 joule and Wg as 10 joule. So, 1.25 minus 10 is minus 8.75 which is negative and shows that it is in the opposite direction of the motion. Work. So, work is related with the force and the, the displacement which this force causes when this force acts on somebody. There is certain displacement. So, just consider a force F which is acting on a mass. So, if this is a body, there is a force being acting. And this is the displacement which this force is causing. So now this object undergoes a certain displacement in say positive x direction. Now what are the components of force F? This is F cos theta, the direction of displacement, and this is F sin theta. That is perpendicular to the direction of motion. So the work done by the force is defined to be the product of component of the force that is F cos theta in the direction of displacement and the magnitude of this displacement. We just found out that the component of F cos F is the force in, in the direction of displacement is F cos theta. So, F cos theta into D F dot D. So, if there is no displacement, there is no work done. If there, there is no displacement, D equal to 0, work done is 0. So, if you even try to push a very hard rigid uh, wall, you exert all your energy, but still there is no work done. Okay, so we have to consider when work is not done. The displacement because we have a formula, right? F dot d, you can say f cos theta, say f cos theta d, right? So the displacement is zero. The weightlifter say he, if it is uh, holding a one fifty kg mass steadily in his shoulder for say thirty second, still because there is no work during this time, the work will be zero in this case. In this case, if the force is zero, then what happens? A block which is moving on a very smooth horizontal plane is not acted upon any force because there is no friction. So it may go large displacement, there is no friction force. Because the force is not there, then work is F into D, F is not there, F is zero, so work done is zero. And then the force and displacement are mutually perpendicular. That means, if we talk about this component F sin theta and this D, because this is perpendicular to the displacement, so there is the angle between these two, D and F sin theta is 0. Why? Because sin theta is 0. So, no work is done. No work is done here. The force and displacement, they are mutually perpendicular. That is, no work is done for pi by 2 because cos pi by 2 is 0. Suppose a block is moving on a smooth horizontal table, the gravitational force which is acting downwards like this one, the gravitational force is acting like this one, but this mg or force or gravity force is acting perpendicular to the displacement direction. That is why the work done is zero. See, if you assume moon's orbit around the earth to be perfectly circular, then the earth gravitational force does not work, does no work. Why? Because if we take this one, the moon's instantaneous displacement is always tangential while the earth force is radially inwards that is in towards the center of the earth and these two are 90 degree that is why there is no work done. So, work can both be positive, it can be negative if because we have simply F d cos theta. So, all depends on the this angle. So, if theta is between 90 and 180 degree, the cos theta is negative. In various examples, the force, the friction force which is opposing the displacement, that is when the body is moving, the friction force is always opposite to it. So, the theta between these two are 180 degree. So, the work done by friction is negative because, because cos 180 is minus 1. 
the dimension of a work and energy is ml square t minus 2 the si unit because of the famous the british physicist james prescott joule in his honor the si unit of these are joule okay so there are other physical concepts and alternative units also because it is widely used these are called erg these are erg electron volt calorie kilowatt hour so we will be coming across them in our discussion so let us take an example a cyclist comes to a skidding stop in 10 meter during this process the force of the sky uh, cycle due to the road is 200 newton and is directly opposed to the motion how much work done or work does the road do on the cycle and how much work does the cycle do on the road see first of all if there is a cyclist cyclist and first question is what is the work done by the road on the cycle because the road is not moving it is stagnant we know that fd cos theta there has to be some displacement there has to be some f and this cos theta cannot be 90 degree so here the displacement is zero for the road so road is not acting anywhere so the work done by road on the cycle cycle is zero so work done on the cycle by the road is work done by the stopping force which is the frictional force so there is, if frictional force is there which is which is only responsible for stopping the cycle so the stopping force and the displacement if this is movement or displacement this is the frictional force they are in opposite direction you get work by this r as f d cos theta this f is given as 200 d is the displacement 10 and cos pi cos pi is minus minus 1 this is pi is 180 degree so you get minus 2000 2000 joule so this is the negative work that brings the cycle or you can say it is retarding or deaccelerating the cycle in accordance with the we theorem work energy theorem and as i discussed earlier from the third law of motion an equal and opposite force act on the road due to the cycle the magnitude is 200 newton but the road is not moving it is not undergoing any displacement so work done by cycle on the road is zero kinetic energy kinetic energy is simply half into mass into v dot v that is velocity product so the kinetic energy is a scalar quantity the kinetic energy of object is a measure of work on the object by virtue of its motion when the body is in movement then we say it is possessing some kinetic energy okay the kinetic energy say of fast flowing stream this can be used to grind corn in a sailing boat the kinetic energy can be used uh, of the of the wind to sail the boat so there are various uh, you know kinetic energies let us take for example uh, these are all the car car this is the mass these are the kinetic energy and how this is formed this is m this is 25 so how this 6.3 into 10 to the power 5 has come half into mass which is 2000 into v velocity 25 into 25 so half into m into v square gives you so this is how the kinetic energy can be computed let us take an example first in a ballistic de uh, demonstration a police officer fires a bullet of mass 50 gram with speed 200 meter per second on soft plywood of thickness 2 centimeter the bullet emerges with only 10 percent of its kinetic energy what is the emergent speed of the bullet see the initial kinetic energy of uh, the bullet is half mv square just use the mass which is given here which is 50 gram and uh, the velocity which is this one so you get 1000 joule but only 10 percent of uh, kinetic energy remains so 10 percent that is 10 by 100 which is actually 0 0.1 0 0.1 of this 1000 is only remaining so this is only 100 joule so what is the final velocity vf and final kinetic energy is half mv vf square and which is equal to the 10 percent of this one which is 100 joule how to find vf take 2 here m in the denominator take the root so this is 60 63.2 so the speed is reduced by about 68 percent not 90 percent work done by a variable force so if you are assuming that always con constant force is acting it is not the case 
you will get a variable force. So, this is a variable force C. This is Fx force with respect to the distance or displacement. Now, this force is acting variably. It is not constant. If it, it would have been constant, then there would have been a straight line like this or this way. But it is variating. So, there is a curve. So, how to go about this? What we can do here is we can divide them into different strips. Say this strip, let us take this strip. This width is delta x. This is the xi initial and final. So, this is delta x. And what is the height? This is fx, say, at this point. So, we have fx into delta x. What is the work done? Work done is simply fx into delta x. Delta x we are taking very small. So, fx is the at this point when we have very small distance, then you can assume that fx is not variating, it, it is constant, it is not variable. So, delta v will be fx into delta x. So, how to find out the complete, complete work done from here to here? You can integrate from xi to xf this value. So, from you can just sigma first summation of these strips xi to xf fx delta x. Now, again in this case also delta x should be so small that we can assume that the force is constant. For that, what we will what we'll do, we will say limit delta x tends to 0. So, delta x cannot be 0, but it can tend to 0. It is very small. So, in this case, when we take limit delta x tends to 0 for this summation of all these strips 1, 2, 3, 4, like to n strips, then you get fx into delta x and these strips are simply rectangular strip. This is every time this is delta x and this is fx. So, fx dx, we are starting from initial position, this position, going up to the final position and then we are taking limit. But we know that when we take limit for sigma, it becomes integration. So, this is simply integration xi to xf, initial position to final position, this is fx dx. Okay. Now, we have a definite integral. So, this area, this area is computed here and this area is nothing but the work done. So, this whole area is the, this shaded region is the work done. I hope you got the idea. So, let us take an example. A woman pushes a trunk on a railway platform which has a rough surface. She applies a force of 100 Newton over a distance of 10 meter. So, initially it starts from here. She applies a constant force till 10 meter. So, this is constant. After that, she got, she becomes tired, progressively tired and uh, her applied force reduces linearly with a distance of, distance to 50 Newton. That is, she start from 10, go up to 20 meter. See, it is given that the total distance through which the trunk has been moved is 20 meter. So, from 10 to 20, she is getting progressively tired. So, from at this point, she, she had some you know power, but it is progressively decreasing. And at this point, it becomes 50 Newton. She started with 100 Newton, but here it became 50 Newton. Plot the force applied by the woman and the frictional force which is 50 Newton. So, we plot like this, this is x, this is f force in Newton. So, in this case 100 Newton is there and it goes up to 10 Newton. So, we have a block here. Then for another 10, 10 uh, meter, this reduces progressively till it comes as 50 Newton. And the friction force is, is uh, acting in the opposite direction. So, we have to take it in the negative. So, this is minus 50, this is a constant frictional force which is acting. We have to calculate the work done by two forces over 20 meter. So, what we can do here is, we know that we have to find out the area of the graph of fx and dx or f, f and x. So, in order to find out the work done by the women, first is this area which is ABCD and second is this trapezium, this one which is area CEID. So this is simply half this uh, this is a rectangle so we did we have to take 100 into 10 so this is 100 into 10 then we have this is a trapezium half into sum of the upper sum of uh, upper the parallel sides and distance between them so sum of parallel sides here this is 100 this is 50 so half into 100 plus 50 and the distance between them is 10 so just compute it it will be 1750 joules now, the work done by the friction force will be what? This rectangle, lower rectangle, because, because it is acting as 50 Newton in the negative direction and the displacement is what 20. 
so minus 50 into 20 which is minus 1000 joule and the area on this this is a negative side of force axis because we have a negative sign it is acting displaced against the displacement that is it has to have a negative sign work energy theorem for a variable force now we know about the work and kinetic energy uh, to prove the work energy theorem for variable force not constant force but the force which is varying we'll talk about one dimension first so the time rate of change in kinetic energy is what see k is half mv square if you take d by dt of both side we get dk by dt is half this d by dt of half mv square half m is constant take m outside v square is 2v if you take d by dt of uh, v square you get 2v so 2 to can get cancelled out you get db by dt of and v but you know that from the uh, newton second law of motion this m this db by dt is what a m is mass and m into a is what force so we can write this as force and this is velocity and this velocity is what dx by dt f into dx by dt so this f into dx by dt you get this is dk by dt cancel this dt dt you get dk equal to fdx dk is equal to fdx now integrate this from initial position to final position ki to kf and xi to xf both sides so you get dk means kf minus ki this is the definite integral and this fdx gives gives you x xi to xf now this kf minus ki and see this is what simply the work done we know about it so kf minus ki is work done so this is the work energy theorem which is proved for the one dimension okay let us take an example a boss uh, a block of a mass 1 kg moving on a horizontal surface with speed well this initial velocity is given 2 meter per second it enters a rough patch ranging from x from 0.1 to 2.01 there is a retarding force fr on the block on this range which is inversely proportional to x over this range so fr is given by minus k by x which is from 0.1 to 2.01 and otherwise it is zero if you take before 0.1 and after 2.01 it is given to be zero k is also given as 0.5 joule what is the final kinetic energy and the speed vf of the block as it is crossing this patch so we have a we know that delta k or you can say simply you know we'll use this formula directly this okay this one we are going to use and this one we are going to use so kf minus ki kf minus ki is what integration of fdx so just let me write the formula so that you understand it better kf minus ki is equal to integration of f dx from initial position to final position what is the initial position 0 0.1 what is the final position 2.01 what is the f f is given by minus k by x so put minus k by x here take k i here so this is the final equation k f is equal to k i from 0 0.1 to 2.01 minus k by x dx now we know that this k i is initial uh, kinetic energy half vm uh, m into v i s square and k is constant take outside dx by x is log n means integration of 1 by x is log log x and this is the natural log that is base is e this is the 2.0 and 0 0.1 these are the definite limit just apply it we will find out the value this half m you have to use mass which is given as 1 kg velocity is given as 2 so just put this value you get final velocity this this is 0 0.5 joule now this is kf so equate this with half m vf square now find out the vf let us take 2 in the numerator m in the denominator so you get under root take 2 kf by m this is 1 meter per second what is the concept of uh, potential energy so potential means when somebody says you have a good potential you will do good in your life that is suggesting the possibility or the capacity of our motion so the potential is something which is stored the stored energy if you talk about a bow string it possesses some potential energy when it is released the arrow would fly off with a very very great speed the earth crust crust is uh, not uniform they it has all types of discontinuities and dislocations that are all fault lines so these fault lines in the earth crust these are somewhat like compressed strings so these are 
compressed springs you can say they have large amount of potential energy whenever an earthquake occurs these fault lines they readjust so the potential energy is simply the stored energy by virtue of the position or configuration of the body when you whenever it comes to potential energy you just have to understand it is a stored energy okay whenever you release this body the this energy which is stored is can be seen as a kinetic energy so because the kinetic energy is by the virtue of motion the gravitational force on say some ball m of mass uh, m is mg what is g g is the gravitational pull or acceleration due to gravity you can say so in this case whenever we talk about a body which is uh, near to earth the height uh, is uh, irrelevant because the radius of earth which is actually responsible the distance which is responsible for the gravitational pull is quite higher than that height so simply when we say uh, force that is mass into acceleration mass is the you can say weight or kg weight so it will be mg and a is the acceleration so acceleration to gravity mg and then when you say force into displacement that gives you work so mg into h so this is how we represent the gravitational potential of uh, energy of an object as a function of height which is denoted by vh so we'll represent potential energy by vh in various books it is represented by p uh, because uh, the power is also represented by b uh, by this symbol only so in this case we'll represent vh as the you can say potential energy and due to gravitational force it becomes mgh so this h is variable and uh, the gravitational force which is equal to the negative of derivative vh with respect to h what you say is the force is minus d by dh of the energy okay so this because it is always the pull is like this even if the it is always at the center now this uh, this vh if you take this vh as mgh and uh, derivate it with respect to h this h goes so this is mg only why this negative sign is this the negative sign shows that the gravitational pull, pull or force is downwards because whenever it you release any body it will come down to the earth now say a body is at height h now you release it here it is at rest it has all mgh but when it comes and strike earth it has some velocity so how to find out v square equal to u square plus 2 say g and acceleration is this height s is height now initial velocity is 0 so v square become 2gh this gives you v square equal to 2gh now when you take half mv square as the kinetic energy which is just when it hurt, hits earth and mgh which is the energy here so half mv square here here because the height is 0 there will be no potential energy here the height is um, at most and uh, it is not moving so it will be mgh only so when we equate half mv square with mgh this is how we get the values okay so uh, the notion of uh, potential energy is uh, applicable only to the class of forces where the work done against the force gets stored up as energy stored up this storing or storage the virtue of being stored as energy is the potential energy okay. the potential energy vx is represented with respect to fx that is this is the force this force fx is given by minus dv by dx this you have to understand this is the rate of change of you can say or you can say the differential of energy with respect to the displacement or we we already know that energy was what force into displacement this energy was force into displacement the force was energy into displacement when we take very small value it becomes dv by dx v is the energy here so when we integrate it from say from one position to another x, xi to xf again we take dx here and this dv this is energy vi to vf so this integration of xi to xf of fx dx gives you 
vi minus vf so change in the potential energy is the this value so the work done by conservative force like the gravity depends on the initial and final position only this shows it depends on initial and final position only okay so if an object mass is released from rest from say from top of a smooth inclined plane say frictionless uh, inclined plane say of height at height h the speed at the bottom will be what under root 2gh because we have seen v square equal to 2gh so velocity become under root 2gh so the bottom at the bottom of the inclined plane what what is this the height if this is the height here height is zero so it will be only the uh, velocity velocity will be zero but the at the bottom of the inclined plane it requires the kinetic energy okay kinetic energy is a uh, half mv square and we take the velocity the different directions of the velocity and uh, the force is non conservative here so the dimension of potential energy is ml square t minus 2 the unit is joule because it is of course an energy only because this is the same as kinetic energy or any work so let me reiterate that the change in potential energy for any conservative force delta v is given by the negative of the work done by the force at for certain displacement the conservation of mechanical energy we will first take the one dimensional notion suppose we have a body which undergoes some displacement say delta x under the action of some force we know that from work energy theorem the change in kinetic energy energy delta x is fx force into the change in the position delta x so if the force is conservative the potential energy vx we have already known vx was what the delta v was what delta v was minus fx delta x so minus delta v equal to fx delta x we just saw that now when we add these two when we add these two this delta k and delta v or you can say minus delta v is going to be zero this implies simply this because this is equal to this so delta k is equal to minus delta v which gives you delta k plus delta v equal to zero take delta common k plus v equal to zero that means the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the body remains the same if you take a path say from xi if this is a path this is initial position this is final position so you can say the kinetic energy at initial and potential energy at initial position will be equal to the final position kinetic and potential value so this k plus vx that is kinetic and potential energy this is known as tme or total mechanical energy individually this k kinetic energy and potential energy this may vary from point to point it is not that k will always remain same v will always remain same if this is greater this will less if this is uh, greater this will be less okay. but the sum will remain constant and this term is specially for conservation that is why we have conservation of mechanical energy here so k plus v always remain constant so there is some definition of this uh, conservative force the force fx is conservative if it can be derived from scalar quantity the potential energy by the by an equation and this equation assume we have already seen this equation as this one then the three dimensional generalization will require the use of a vector derivative which we will discuss later sometime the work done by conservative force depend only on the final and initial position that is the end points so the work done is kf minus ki which is vxi minus vxx this is kinetic energy difference this is potential energy difference and the third definition also state that the work done by this force in a closed path is zero is zero and uh, we know when we have i and f common that means this becomes equal so ki xi equal to xf so the work done is also zero okay. so let us uh, emphasize and point the principle of conservation of total mechanical energy this can be stated as the total mechanical energy of a system is conserved if the forces doing work on it are conservative this is very important again let me uh, 
tell this to you again that total mechanical energy of a system is conserved if the forces doing work on it are conservative. If we can take uh, say some example of a spring force, you are pressing it, it is coming back again like this. So we have this uh, con uh, con conversion of uh, potential energy to kinetic energy of a body. If you have a mass, C mass dropped from height. So at this point it has M the total energy as, let me tell you here. So these are the three positions. This is the highest position. So this is energy at height, height edge. So it is at rest. So it will be Mg into complete. This is the height. Now at this certain height edge, it will contain the MGH that is this height and also half Mv VH, VH, VH square that is the velocity at this point. At this point the height is 0, so it will only contain half Mv square. So in all these all are equivalent, MGH is equal to Mg capital H is equal to half Mv square which in turn is equal to MGH plus half Mv H square. So the constant force is you know in the case is spatially means distance wise dependent on the force Fx. So the total mechanical energy is conserved, you can say the energy, these two energy are equal. So you can equate Mg capital H with half Mv square. This gives you the final velocity Vfs under root 2gh. And this we have already seen. And uh, you can, uh, you know, take these two also. With this you can find out the velocity Vh square. That or you can, can equate these two also. Or you can put Vf here, you know, you can put Vf here. So that you get the Vh square is equal to 2g h minus h. At certain height h, if it the body is at rest, it is purely potential. It comes down, it has potential and kinetic energy. When it touches the ground, it has only kinetic energy. A bob of mass m is suspended by a light string of length l. It is imparted a horizontal velocity v0 at the lowest point a. So this is the lowest point a such that it completes a semicircular tra trajectory in the vertical plane with the string becoming slack. Slack means the, the string becomes folded and it will come down only on reaching the top most point c. So it is slack so it is not go going to provide any tension at this place. So this goes from here to here and here to here and then it slacks and it comes down freely. Obtain an expression from v, for V0, the speed at points B and C and the ratio of kinetic energy that is Kb, this one, the kinetic energy at B, kinetic energy at C and also comment on the nature of the trajectory of the bob after it reaches point C here. So there are two external forces on the bob. What are these? See, let us take the free body diagram. If it is here, there is a tension Ta, there is Mg here, Mg. This Ta minus Mg because it is moving now, so Ta minus Mg is, will be equal to half Mv square and here will take half Mv0 square. It will only have half Mv square here because at, it is at the lowest point, there is no height here. So uh, this is the first, first one. Energy will be only half Mv0 square which is here. and if you take the free body diagram, this Ta minus Mg will be equal to this half Mv square or you can say Mv square by L. Okay. Now how this Mv square by L has come? This Mv square by L, M into A acceleration or you can say V, v equal to R omega because this is a circular motion. So we know that Mv square by R is the value. So when v square and r is length, right? So this is how Ta minus mg equal to mv square by L has come. It is zero, the potential energy is zero at this point. It has only kinetic energy. Now at point C, what is happening? It is at say we have velocity vc here. So half mvc square plus now the height becomes this is L, this is L. So two two into L. So mg into h. That is mg into 2l. So half mv square, vc square plus 2mgl. And uh, we also know that in this case, free, free body diagram or ball is this is the 
say tension C, okay, and this is also mg. So we have mg equal to again. We also have this the similar case mv square by r. We will take mv square by r at this point. So we see at the speed at C. When we take or when we take these two equation, one and this uh, thirteen and fourteen. Then we just try to solve it. We get E equal to five by two mgm. Now, when we equate this to the energy, which is this one, half mv zero square at this point, we get v zero equal to under root five g. Now, vc vc can be again computed because we have vc like this. We just cut this. Vc becomes under root gn from this equation. Now, at b point, it has both the energy. That is half m v b square velocity at b. And MGL, this is the height MGL. So what do you get? You get uh, this is the energy. Now if we have to equate this to the energy at A because the energy at A and all the points A, A B, C will remain same. So we have this uh, V square equal to 5GL. Let us put it here. High half MV square plus MGL, MGL is equal to half MV zero square. Now V zero square can be easily written as 5 mgl and you get the final as 5 by 2 mgl and in this case we get vb equal to under root gl now the ratio of kinetic energy at b and c kb and kc kb here and kc so this will be half mvb square by vc half mv square m by 2 m by m by 2 cancels out and you get vb square by vc square we just found out and put it here 3 is to 1 so at point C, the string becomes slack and the velocity of the bob is horizontal to the left. If you uh, happen to cut the string here, if the connecting string is cut at this instant, the ball will execute a projectile motion with horizontal projection akin to a rock, rock kicked horizontally, or it is akin means it is like from the edge of the cliff. If you have a say cliff and you happen to kick a rock, the way it goes. The same way this is going to go. The potential energy of a spring. So, the potential energy, uh, or you can say the spring force, is an example of variable force, so which is conservative. In this 6.7, these are all the diagram what is happening. We have a block, we have a block which is, which is attached to this spring and it is resting on smooth horizontal surface the other end of the spring is attached to a rigid wall here the spring is light and it may be you can treat it as massless so for an ideal spring this spring force fs is proportional to the distance we know and that is the displacement so x is the displacement of the block from equilibrium position so this this uh, displacement it can be positive it can be negative that is see if you if the string if this is normal position string is we have stretched the block we have compressed the block so in this case it can be negative and positive so the force of the spring is called the hooks law what is it is called it is hooks law and we mathematically state it like this fs is equal to minus kx what is this k k is called the spring constant and uh, the unit is newton per meter so the spring is said to be stiff if k is large if this k is large and soft if k is small it all depends on k now when we pull the block up outwards like this if we pull it like this means it is the normal position we are pulling it so if the extension is xm that is from here to here it is extension from here to here then the work done by the force or spring force will be what we know that fs is minus kx so energy will be or the, the work done will be integration of this fs with dx that is this one this one so you can take kx dx so kx dx minus will be here from 0 to xm means from here to this point xm now this becomes minus k xm square by 2 by just integrate the x now this is uh, the expression which can be obtained by considering the area of a triangle also you can take the a triangle if this is fs and x distribution this is the area of triangle half into base into altitude so this is the base this is the altitude you will get the same value and the work done by the force in pulling uh, this is you are pulling a force pulling pulling something 
So this is positive because you are trying to overcome the spring force. Now the same is true when you, are, you compress this string, uh, spring means here. So this is now your XM and this will be again the work done will be same but here the distance is less. The external force because it cannot be negative you are pressing it. So if the block is moved from say initial position I to F the work done by the spring force will from say from I to F will be Kx dx this is Fx and Fx is by Hooke's law we have just seen it is minus Kx and uh, we can just take k constant on outside and this will be x, x, x square by 2 these are definite integrals so this is k x i square means k by 2 is common x i square minus x f square so the work done by spring force depend only on the endpoints that is initial point and final point and if the block is pulled from say x i uh, and allowed to return to x i the work done will be zero because initial position and final position both will be x i x i if you just uh, you know pull or push it and allow it to come to the original position the work done will be zero so work done by the spring force in a in a cyclic process is zero and uh, because it is though both the things are uh, both the positions are same so we can just say that spring force is position dependent only in the force if as first stated by the hooks law fs equal to minus kx and does work which only depends on I, xi and xf initial and final position that is the spring force is also conservative force this is the definition of conservative force also so we have the now let us define the potential energy vx of a spring uh, so we define the potential energy of vx to be zero when the block and spring system they are in equilibrium position that is we have not pulled it or pushed it so for an extension say you are compressing or extend ex, extending it the analysis what we have done says that vx equal to kx square by 2, two like this and we can easily verify that this minus dv by dx which is the uh, potential rate this is what this is fx or you can say f and this is minus kx by hooke's law so if the block of mass m is extended say to xm and it is released to rest then the total mechanical energy for any point x lies between minus xm and xm that is this point this is the equilibrium position you either uh, say elongate it or pull it or push it so this is say xm this is minus xm in this case half kxm square will be half kx square plus half mv square this is this is the potential energy and of course it will have some velocity also so half mv square is the kinetic energy which is, is which is actually equal to half k xm square which we already seen so we have invoked here the conservation of mechanical energy total mechanical energy will be equal to the potential energy and kinetic energy and uh, here we see that if velocity is zero that means the speed on the kinetic energy will be maximum where uh, when it is at rest so at at rest x, x equal to 0 half mv square will be what or you can say x will x will be equal to 0 so if this becomes 0 half mvm square that is maximum you have to put m here will be equal to half kxm square so what you get vm will be equal to under root k by m xm so just see that vm is the maximum speed this k by m has a dimension t to the power minus 2 and our equation also becomes dimensionally correct so the kinetic energy it gets converted to potential energy and vice versa so total mechanical energy always remains the same to simulate car accidents auto manufacturers study the collision of moving cars with mounted springs of different spring constant that is k consider a typical simulation with car of mass 1000 kg moving with a speed this much on a smooth road and colliding with horizontally mounted spring or spring constant k that is 6.25 into 10 to the power 3 what is the maximum compression of this spring this is a, a diagram let us uh, you know before just going ahead with the answer uh, let me tell you one more thing this is the parabolic plot of kinetic energy which is the velocity this is the potential energy and the kinetic energy and these are obeying the hook law every time you see when this is higher this is lower they both are same here they both are same here that means the total mechanical energy e equal to k plus v will always remain constant 
Now let us come back again to the question. So at maximum compression, the kinetic energy of the car is converted to what? Entirely into potential energy. So the kinetic energy of moving car is what? Half mv squared. Mass you use, it will be 10 to the power 3 because it is 1000 kg. So kinetic energy is this. And how we have come across 5, 18 into 5 by 18, we have converted into meter per second. Now, at maximum compression XM, the potential energy V of a spring is equal to what? Kinetic energy of the moving car. We know the from the principle of uh, conservation of mechanical energy. So, this V will be half K XM square. Just equated, you will get XM equal to 2.0. This is not the very idealized situation. The spring is uh, considered to be massless. It is not like that always. There are certain remarks we need to uh, discuss on conservative force before we close this discussion. Information on time is absent from the our discussion. So, in this example, we have seen an example considered just now. We can calculate the compression, but not the time over which the compression occurs. So, a solution of Newton's second law for this system for this, we need certain temporal information, time related information. Also, not all forces are conservative. This friction is a non conservative force. The principle of conservation of energy, we need to modify it. The zero of the potential energy is arbitrary. It is set uh, according to the convenience. So, for the spring force, we took Vx equal to 0 at x equal to 0. That is, the unstretched spring has zero potential energy. And for constant gravitational force mg, we have taken V equal to 0 on the earth surface. But we will see that this actually, you know, is not very true because we have universal law of gravitation. We will see how things goes on. Consider uh, a example which we have seen taking the coefficient of friction mu. This has to be taken as 0 0.5 and calculate the maximum compression of the spring. We have friction. So, in the presence of friction, both the spring force and the friction force act so as to oppose the compression of the spring. So, spring will also say I do not want to be stretched or compressed. The friction force will also say I do not want the, the this body to move. We will invoke the work energy theorem here, here not the conservation of the mechanical energy. So, the change in kinetic energy is what? See, delta K will be Kf minus Ki. Initial, initially, initially it, will, it was half mv square. Finally, it was 0. Okay. So, because we are trying to uh, compress it. So, work done by the net force will be what? This W will be half K xm square minus minus of mu mg xm, right. So, when we equate these two, you know this, why, why we have uh, work done like this? Say this is kx, this is mu mg. How this mu mg has come? We know that this uh, friction force is mu into fk, right. So, this mg has come, which is normal, n, n is equal to mg. So, n is equal to mg. So, mg into mu and then when we, this is total force and xm is the, xm is, because we know that uh, energy is force into displacement. So, xm is the maximum uh, compression we are talking about. So, mu into mg into xm is the energy. That is the, you can say the uh, energy or you can say the energy by the friction force, work done by the friction force. And this is we have already seen in the previous discussion. This is half km kxm square by the spring. So this is by friction, this is by spring. Now, when we equate these two, we get an equation like this. Now we put the values, we have mu mg like this, and we we can just rearrange this equation. We have a solution to this equation, and this xm becomes this value. So we take the positive root because the distance cannot be negative, and we put all these numerical values, we get xm equal to xm is the maximum one maximum compression or distance like 1.35. So, if two forces on the boundary, they consist of a conservative force Fc, we are this F sub C, C is for conservative force and non-conservative, this is Fnc, Nc for non-conservative conservative force. The conservation of mechanical energy, we can modify it by just putting Fc plus Fnc both together into delta x as delta k. But we know that the conservative force, in the case of conservative force, Fc into delta x minus delta b that we have already seen. Now, just uh, you know, 
compare and add these two, we get delta k plus v is f n c delta x. So, in fact, this delta e energy or uh, total energy, you can say f n c into delta x, this e is the total mechanical energy. Uh, we have a path, so we can say e f final energy minus e i will be equal to work done by the non conservative force. This w n c is the total work done by the non conservative force over certain path. So, unlike uh, conservative force, this w n c depends on initial and final position. Various forms of energy, the energy of uh, conservation of energy. So, we have seen total mechanical energy, mechanical energy, we have seen by virtue of motion, we have kinetic energy, by, by virtue of position, it has potential energy. But there are certain ener different energies also, like the heat. You know, you will always see when two uh, collision is happening, then there will be some, some sort of uh, heat being produced. If something is sliding also, there is a friction down there, so there will be some heat. So, there will be a lost, you know, lost energy or you can say there is always some energy being lost in the, in the form of heat. You rub your hand in winter, why? Because you want to make them warm and uh, a transfer of heat energy is obtained by nothing that 1 kg of water releases about 42,000 of energy when it is cooling by 10 degree centigrade. So, this is the idea which I want to give that how this heat becomes important as an energy. Then chemical energy, chemical energy is whenever something is happening, there is chemical things also going on. So, this chemical energy is also there for conversion from one, one chemical form to another. That is, we have exothermic, endothermic reaction in which the heat is absorbed, heat is released here, heat is absorbed here. For example, the core consists of carbon and kilogram of it when burnt, it releases 3 into 10 to the power 7. All these combustion of coal, cooking gas, wood, petroleum. These are indispensable and they are taking the form of or they, they are utilizing the chemical energy form. Then electrical energy is also very important or bulbs, fan, these are all, all having the electrical energy. Energy is associated with electric current. For example, an urban Indian household, it consumes around 200 joule of energy per second on an average. The equivalence of mass and energy, uh, till the end of 19th century, physicists believed that in every physical and chemical process, the mass of isolated system is conserved. So, matter might change its phase. For example, glacier ice will become to stream, but matter is neither created nor destroyed. Then came Albert Einstein. He showed that mass and energy are equivalent and they are related by what? A very famous equation, Einstein equation E equal to mc square. C is the speed of light, which is in vacuum, 3 into 10 to the power 8. So, a staggering amount of energy is associated with just a kilogram of matter. See, this is a kilogram of matter. If you take C square, this is speed of light. It is 9 into 10 to the power 16 joule. This is equivalent to the annual, annual for a year electrical output of a very large 3000 megawatt power generating station. We have a nuclear energy, most destructive and most beneficial also, fusion bombs, etc. Uh, this is the approximate energy associated with various phenomena. Just have a look on this so that you understand what is going on, how much energy is produced. We have uh, nuclear fission, nuclear fusion. They also release a lot of energy. Nuclear weapons are being made and this energy is being harnessed. Uh, fusion, fusion are being harnessed for creation of electricity. This is a table. So, we will take the values from this table. You just have to go through this table. Now, in this table, uh, examine this and uh, the energy required to break one bond in DNA electron volt, the kinetic energy of an air molecule 10 to the power minus 21 joule in, in electric volt and the daily intake of human adult in kilocalories. So, the energy required to break one bond of DAs we have to uh, go to the table, we will take 10 to the power minus 20 and this is of course joule and electron volt conversion. So, we divide by this, this is equivalent to 0 0.06 electron volt. See, 0 point electron volt is 100 milli, milli electron volt, this is 100 milli electron volt. Air molecule again will go to the table, this is the value divided by 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 which is the conversion from joule to electron volt, you get this value. The average human consumption again 10 to the power 7 and this is the kilocalorie and uh, joule the conversion. 
so this is uh, this this is just an you know way of representing energy in different form the principle of conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created cannot be destroyed it can only be transformed from one say form to another okay so we have seen that the total mechanical energy of the system is conserved if the force or forces they are doing work on it they are conservative if some of the forces are non conservative also then the part of the mechanical energy this may get transferred into other form like the heat light and sound but the total energy of any isolated system do not change it does not change as long as one accounts for all forms of energy like the heat light and sound energy can be transformed may be transformed from one form to another but the total energy of the isolated system always remain constant let me reemphasize that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed power not only the work done on the on the object is important but also what is the rate at which the work is done is also to be considered we can say that a person is physically fit if he uh, not only climbs four floors of a building but he is climbing very fast so power is defined as the rate at which work is done or you can say at the rate the rate at which energy is transferred so the average power of a force can be defined as the ratio of the work that is this one to the total time taken so power is work by time energy by time any instantaneous power for a very short time we need to limit the value delta t to very very small value so it approaches, approaches zero now the power becomes dw by dt this dw is work done by the force for certain displacement dx so we said dw is equal to what we know that dw is simply f into this say dr is the distance okay so the instantaneous power can be exp expressed as let us put w uh, replace this w with f dr f comes outside this dr by dt this is a dot product so it is dr by dt is what it is velocity so force into velocity in this case force is the in this force is the force and v is the instantaneous velocity when the force f is applied so power uh, like the work energy energy this is also a scalar quantity the dimensions are ml square t minus 3 the unit is si unit is watt and this is in the name of james watt and honor of J james watt one watt is one joule per second james watt he is one of the innovators of steam engine in the 18th century there is another popular unit of power which is horsepower hp this horsepower is related to what in with this number so one horsepower is 746 watt okay this is still in use you will see in automobiles and motorbikes this horsepower is being used so we encounter this unit watt when we are buying electrical goods like the bulbs the heaters and the refrigerators a 100 watt bulb which is on say for 10 hours it uses how much 1 kilowatt hour of energy so 100 watts so 100 watt time is 10 hour so this give, gives you 1000 watt hour take it as 1 kilo so it will be 1 kilowatt hour take this 10 by 3 that is watt convert this hour into second so this is 3600 second so now this watt and second becomes joule so 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 you will often see that the electric bills carry the energy consumption unit in kilowatt hour please understand that kilowatt hour is unit of energy not the power an elevator can carry a maximum load of 1800 kg that is elevator plus the passengers this is moving up with a constant speed of 2 meter per second so there is an elevator it is moving up with constant speed so constant speed is there 
the frictional force opposing the motion the friction force which is opposing the motion is 4000 newton now we have to determine the minimum power delivered delivered by the motor to the elevator in watts also in horsepower so now the, the directions like are like this we have mg here the friction force is acting against it so ff so this ff and since it is moving up so when it is moving up the friction force is not in this direction but it will be in the opposite direction so friction force will be ff so ff plus mg is the final force final force will be this f that is that is friction force plus mg now put all these values which are given in the question you get 22000 now the motor must supply enough power in order to balance this force what will be the power force into the velocity which is 2 meter per second so this gives you 44000 you want to convert it into horsepower use 746 and you get divided by 746 you get 59 horsepower collisions so in uh, physics we study motion that is how the position are changing but we try to discover also some physical quantities which which are not changing in physical process like the the laws of momentum and energy conservation these are typical examples instances of that we'll try to apply these laws to commonly seen phenomena like the collisions collision is just the way two or three objects they they collide means the billiards the marbles and the carom these are all games of collisions and we will study the collision of two masses in an idealized form so we consider two mass we'll be considering this so you have to learn this and uh, you know observe this uh, figure very carefully because all other things which are coming are dependent on this diagram having an initial velocity say i this velocity v1 i and this mass 2 now when this mass 1 is colliding with m2 then this mass 1 is going here with some final velocity and this mass 2 is going here with some final velocity so from the horizontal here means it is making an angle of theta 1 degree this is making an angle of theta 2 degree degree means they are a flying off in different directions so elastic and inelastic collisions there are many questions which are being asked on this elastic and inelastic collision so in all collisions the total linear momentum is conserved this is very important total linear momentum is conserved the initial momentum of the system will be equal to the final momentum of the system so how to argue on this when two objects they collide that means two objects are there when they are going to collide that means the mutual repulsive forces which are acting on or you, you can say impulsive force acting over this collision time delta t can cause the change in their respective momentum let us take this one this is the change in the momentum this is f12 12 is the force exerted on the first particle by 2 this is the delta t time so you know that this uh, change in momentum is force into delta t time for delta t they are in contact then delta p2 will be the force exerted by the second particle on one and the time remains the same in this case by the newton third law of motion the f12 will be equal to minus f21 equal and opposite force will be there because this is exerting force here this is going to exert force here means equal and opposite so 1 2 will be equal to uh, 2 1 the forces so when we take this this equation or uh, these two equation becomes delta p1 plus delta p2 equal to 0 and this conclusion shows that the momentum remains the same even after and before so this conclusion is true even though the force acting in a complex fashion as you saw during the collision time delta t and since the third law is true here at every instant this will be true third law is you know uh, true everywhere so the total impulse on the first object will be equal and opposite to that of the second what about the total kinetic energy of the system it will not be necessary necessarily conserved 
because what is happening when they are impacting see if they are impacting that means you will hear a sound you will see some heat also so part of the initial kinetic energy is transformed into another energy also like the heat and the sound so the the way in order to visualize the deform you can say the deformation during the collision uh, you can see in terms of a compressed spring so if this spring connecting two masses regain its original shape without any loss in energy then the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy but the kinetic energy during the collision this at delta t time is not constant that is why we call it as elastic collision right this this type of collision are elastic collision what is then uh, inelastic or other collision see the deformation may not be relieved and the two bodies could move together after the collision that means two bodies striking or coming to coming say head on and they are combining and now they are moving together right after the collision so the collision in which the two particles they move together they are after the collision that means they are not going to separately go in different directions but they will together be a system and then they will move forward this is called as completely inelastic collision so there is a intermediate case also where the, dis, the the deformation is partly relieved and some of the initial kinetic energy is lost that is in heat or some sound this is more common and this is known as inelastic collision let us talk uh, collision in one dimension as we see here uh, the completely inelastic collision in one dimension if this is the figure see in completely inelastic collision this m1 and m2 they are going to be together after collision so when this collides with this one they this m1 joins with m2 so m1 joins with m2 and they together goes in the in some direction or the same direction you can say so what is the initial initial momentum m1 into v1 i and this m1 say m1 comes here and it strikes it so m1 plus m2 into some final velocity so what will be the final velocity we divide or we take this into the denominator this will be m1 by m1 plus m2 v1 i what is the loss in the kinetic energy on collision see delta k this that is the change in the kinetic energy will be half into m1 into v1 i square minus half into m1 plus m2 into some vf square okay let us uh, put this vf this one in this place so we get some value here which is in terms of v1 i take half m1 v1 i common so you get something inside like this just just rearrange it and you get a value or you can say an expression like this now let us take the elastic collision and uh, we have just seen the nomenclature where we say theta 1 theta 2 equal to 0 the momentum and kinetic in energy conservation in this case will be m1 v1 i will be equal to m1 when it strikes so m1 v1 f plus m2 v2 f this is the momentum equation if you put half here th this is the kinetic energy conservation law so the initial kinetic energy will be the addition of the first and second kinetic energy of these two particles separately so in order to solve this we can just rearrange and try to solve it we get some equation this is a square minus b square type so this would be a minus v a plus b that is uh, you can just rearrange this you get v 2 f in terms of the first one the second velocity comes in terms of the initial and final velocity of the first one now let us uh, substitute this in this equation so we get a value of v1f similarly we get a value of v2f you just have to you know resolve this is just like any other equation so you have to consider and you have to worry about this v1f and v2f so the unknowns v1f and v2f these are obtained in terms of known which is m1 m2 and v1i we are aware of this so there are certain special cases which are very interesting to know first is if the two masses are equal if the two masses are equal if m1 is equal to m2 this becomes zero okay and how about this 
if m1 is equal to m2 this becomes 2m this becomes m just cancel them out you get v2f equal to v1i so the first mass come to rest and it pushes off the second mass with its initial speed on collision i hope you got the idea means it is striking the second one this comes to rest and this goes off with the same velocity same velocity which by which the first one is striking the second situation is the one mass if it is uh, dominating say m2 is very larger very large value than m1 so if you just put it here and since m2 is very large you can just say ignore this m1 ignore this m1 so essentially this if you say it is it is zero v2f will be zero essentially if you say okay m1 can be just uh, you can just uh, relieve it or you can ignore it so this gets cancel out and you get one v1 i in the negative direction so v v1 f is equal to or you can say equivalent to minus v1 i and v2 f equal to or equivalent to zero so the heavier mass is undisturbed while the lighter mass reverses its velocity what it means is there is a lighter mass there is a greater mass it strikes it it this one has no change but this one reverses it comes like this and goes like this next is slowing down of new neutrons we will taking we are taking a example so what this says is in a nuclear reactor a neutron of high speed typically say 10 to the power 7 meter per second must be slowed to 10 to the power 3 meter per second so that it can have high probability of interacting with isotope uranium isotope and causing it to a phenomena called fission show that a neutron can lose most of its kinetic energy in an elastic collision with light nuclei like deuterium and carbon which has mass of only a few times the neutron mass the material making up the light nuclei usually heavy water d2o or graphite is called a moderator the question is like this let us see one by one the kinetic energy initial kinetic energy of the neutron say k1 i will be half m1 into v1 i square what is the final kinetic energy kinetic 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 energy will be k1 f half m1 v1 uh, square final velocity this we will take from this equation this this equation okay v1 f so what will be v1 f this will be the final velocity will be half mv square but here we are take, going to take v1f so let us take from this equation we just saw m1 minus m2 by m1 plus m2 whole square in terms of v1i so the fractional kinetic energy loss will be just divide this this these two so divide k1f by k1i so you get some equation like this so this is simply uh, a rearrangement the fractional kinetic energy which is gained by the moderating nuclei k2f now we have talked about k1f and k1i but what is the fractional kinetic energy which is gained by moderating nuclei as asked in the question it is k2f by k1i what it will be f2 has to be because it is in an in elastic collision so you can say f2 plus f1 is 1 f1 plus f2 is 1 okay the kinetic energy but we can find out f2 by transferring f2 f1 here put this f1 value this in this uh, say in this equation you get a equation like this or you can say an expression like this so we can just verify the result just by substituting the value for deuterium we know m2 equal to 2m1 and we obtain f1 is 1 by 9 f2 is 8 by 9 just put the value and 90 percent of almost 90 percent of the neutron energy this transfer to deuterium uh, carbon we have f1 as 71.6 percent fraction so f2 is 28.4 percent and uh, this is how we solve it so this uh, see if we have a body two bodies which are coming in opposite direction and if they now strike then we call it as a head-on collision collision in two dimension so we have we have seen a figure which is coming like this so there is a mass striking here the mass are, masses are going like this so this is theta 1 this is theta 2 okay now when we are talking about two dimension 
So this is M1, this is M2. M1 uh, is coming and M2 is stationary. So linear momentum is conserved in such a collision. Since the momentum is a vector, so this implies we have three equation for the three direction x, y, z. So just consider this plane determined by the certain final velocity. So M1 and M2 we have to choose for say x, y plane. The conservation of the z component of linear momentum will imply that the entire collision has to be in in one in x y plane in x y plane so the conservation of the z component as is it is implying x y plane it has to have collision in x y plane so the x y component will be something like this this m1 with v1 f it strikes now when the the m1 goes in this direction it is a horizontal component this is this is m1 v1 f cos theta 1 and how about m2 it goes like this so it has a horizontal component m2 v2 f cos theta 2 okay so this m this horizontal component will be initial and these two addition so this one and this one how about vertical vertical component see it is going in the horizontal direction so there is no vertical component so it will be zero but m1 has vertical component this one which is going to m1 v1 f sin theta 1 in this case m2 so that it has opposite direction so we have to use minus this is m2 v2 now v2 f this is not cos theta now sin theta so sin theta 1 sin theta 2 and we are using minus so these are the two equations but we are aware of the mass m1 m2 and initial velocity but we have to find four unknowns which is this one this one and theta 1 and theta 2 but we have only two equations one equation and two equation how to find others if theta 1 and theta 2 are 0 then we just come to the one dimension and we also have uh, say one more equation of collision if it is elastic that the initial energy the kinetic energy will be the sum of final two kinetic energy so we get an additional equation but still we have this third equation we are short because we need we are we want to find out four unknowns we need at least four equations for this so we need to know at least one of them that is theta 1 or theta 2 then only this problem is solvable so for this theta 1 to be known we use or we can use um, detector in an angular fashion from x to y axis then if you have m1 m2 this is also known theta 1 is also known using the detector then we can now find out the final velocity and theta 2 we'll take an example consider the collision which is depicted in this okay this was this between two billiard balls the masses are equal so m1 is equal to m2 so both has mass say m the first ball is called the q while the second ball, ball is called the target this is q this is target the billiard player wants to sink the target ball in corner pocket which is at an angle of say theta 2 37 degree assume that the collision is elastic and that frictional and rotational motions are not important you can ignore this you have to obtain theta 1 we'll start with the momentum conservation since the masses are equal the in this you can just write m m m here the initial momentum will be equal to the final momentum of these two so initial momentum of these two will be the final momentum of these two and just we are not writing m because they will uh, anyways be cancelled out and we can write half m here or half m here half m here okay but uh, we will do what we will not use this we will just square them we will just square them so we squaring of this will give you this dot this so now we will multiply this with this this with this this with this and this with this so you get v1 f square v2 f square and 2 v1 f dot v2 f okay what is this we take the dot product so this will be 2 v1 f v2 f cos and theta 1 plus 37 degree we are talking about whole angle one angle is known 37 
this angle is not known so we are writing it, it as theta 1 and since the collision is elastic and masses are also equal so if now here we'll use half m half m half m i am writing half m because i just want to tell you that we have cancelled this half m half m this is essentially the kinetic energy conservation equation so v1 uh, initial will be equal to v1 and v2 final let us take this one and this one now compare these two so you get cos theta 1 plus 37 is 0 theta 1 plus 37 means if this 0 means this has to be 90 degree theta 1 become 53 degree this also proves one thing when two equal masses undergo a glancing elastic collision with one of them is at rest after the collision they will move at right angles to each other so this um, collision is very normal thing this happens in normal life and uh, when they are colliding some some can change velocity some can come to rest and this totally depends on their interaction their masses shapes and size one important event is called scattering because of this collision let us summarize the work energy power the work energy theorem is stating that the change in the kinetic energy that is kf minus ki of a body is the work done that is the work done by the net force on the body if the force is conservative when when is the force conservative there are certain conditions to be met first is work done by it on an object is path independent that means it is only depending on the initial position and final position the second condition for the force to be conservative is the work done by the force is zero for an arbitrary closed path if the path is closed it has to be zero then we say the force is conservative for a conservative force in one dimension we may define potential energy function vx like this fx equal to minus dvx by dx and this is simply vi minus vx integration of initial to final fx dx we are just taking the integral of these two the principle of conservation of mechanical energy is stating that the total total mechanical energy that is, that is t total mechanical energy tme remain constant if only forces that act on body they are conservative okay the gravitational potential energy of particle say of mass m at a height x above the earth like this is given by mgx mg is the weight h is the height from here to here so vx will be equal to mgx g is the uh, gravity the elastic potential energy of a spring of force constant k with an extension x is given by half kx square the scalar and dot product of two vectors say a and b is, is represented by a dot b and uh, this is a scalar quantity a dot b is simply a b cos theta theta is the angle between a b so it can be positive negative or zero depending on the value of theta the scalar product of two vectors can be interpreted as the product of magnitude of one vector and component of say this is a and this is b so multiplication of a with component of b on a so a this will be component b cos theta so into b cos theta similarly you can take the component of a on b for unit vectors i dot a j dot j k dot a is going to give you 1 i j j k k i will give you 0 scalar products they obey the commutative and distributive laws these are the physical quantity we discussed work which is f into d shown by w all these work kinetic energy and potential energy they are expressed in the in terms of joules so we can take mechanical energy also so kinetic energy represented by k is half mv square potential energy represented by vx sometimes it is represented by p also because this p and p are are same that is why we represent it by vx it is given by minus dvx by dx total mechanical energy g is simply kinetic energy plus well uh, the v that is the mgh or you can say potential energy spring constant is given by we have said two equations here f equal to minus kx this is the coefficient of this spring or uh, and this compressional uh, extraction and vx is minus half kx square 
power is given by f dot v or you can say dw by dt rate of change of energy or work so this is all about the discussion on the topic of work energy and power thank you so much and take care of yourself